doing wrong. They will see your honorable behavior. And they will give honor to God when he judges the world. When we set foot in Emmanuel's apartment last weekend, I saw that verse lived out. Live honorably. And as family, you should know, Emmanuel and his friends would test, testify the same very fine, upstanding young man. 20, 28 uh, years in, in wisdom and, and the heart of a four-year-old because he trusted God uh, with, with all of his heart. When Emmanuel came to us, he... I, I, I was blown away that he already had a, a bachelor's degree in engineering. Very intelligent young man. And as we talked, uh, in May especially, after he first moved in with us, we, we talked a good bit about, you know, Emmanuel, why, why would you leave your, your job? Even he had worked in an oil factory. And, you know, why, why would you, in a processing plant, why would you leave that to give up everything? Probably a good paying job, a respectable position. To, to come and work with children, to learn, work, uh, learn to work with children. He said, because it's what God's called me to do, and I love children. That was resonated last, last weekend as we, we remembered Emmanuel with many of his college friends. He loved children. And as, as he came, Christy is here. He worked directly with Christy in our church. as uh, She's our director of children's ministry. And Patrick is our overseer. And, and he worked hand in hand with us. Ashley, one of his teenagers that, that he played with. He said, I love children. There, there are a lot of things that I can think of uh, which, which pastors are guilty of. We, we are often uh, reminded of, of our human side and, and just how human we are. But when I, when I think of Emmanuel and the way he lived when he was with us, the way that I understand he lived here at school, and after being in his house, seeing the way he lived, this man was the same in front of you that he was with four-year-old children and in front of his father. There's a lot he said for that. <coughs> that is highly respectful. I think of Enoch. Um, he... he Walked with God and he was not. Emmanuel loved God. As a matter of fact, I, this past summer, we, as, as he was finishing his time with us, we, we spent a week at Caswell Baptist Assembly down on, on, the, on the beach. I, I thought, wow, Emmanuel, this would be a great opportunity for you to have a room all by yourself on the water, on the beach, and you can go and work with with teenagers and go rebuild houses for senior adults and build wheelchair ramps. But more importantly, you can relax and just focus on the Lord before you, you go back to school. And as we wrapped that week up, he picked me up one day. I, I had left my, my truck in another place, and he, he drove across Southport to pick me up. And I'll never forget the music that was playing with his radio. Our children had done a musical um, that summer. They... they Last summer, they, they worked on just singing praise songs for kids. And I remember, jump, jump, and shout, or I forget, forget the words. But it was far from what I would expect to be playing on the CD player of a 28-year-old man. And I was blown away. I said, Emmanuel, that's, that's music from, from the summer with the children. He said, I love it. I jump, I shout, I shout for Jesus. And, and I, he was the same all the time. All the time. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to share another passage with you. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself a sacrifice for us, a pleasing road to God. That was Emmanuel. I know when, when God looked at Emmanuel, he said, I'm, I'm very well pleased. <clears throat> Did well. Last summer, Emmanuel loved children so much. As a matter of fact, we, we had him speak at the elementary school where our church was meeting, and he had the opportunity to talk to every child in that school 
400 plus children. And he shared, I, I, Travis Curran, our other pastor, and I sat in the room with him and we watched all day as class after class came in. And he mesmerized them with stories of home. They, were, uh, they, they wanted him to sing to them. Emmanuel was not an amazing singer, but he loved to sing. He made a joyful noise for God. And, and the children had him sing over and over. They asked him questions. I remember he had a story of a snake. I don't know what it was, but the kids were enamored by it. And, and every class wanted to ask the same stories, to hear the same stories. And as we left that day, he said, I know I want to be a children's pastor. Maybe I want to teach too. I said, well, what are you going to do about that? He said, I'll talk to my advisor. And so he did when he came back to school uh, this, this summer, here at, at the end of last summer. He, he, he looked into what it would take to not only be a children's pastor and finish this master's degree, but to also add certification so that he could teach children. He had a heart for children. He loved God. And he as an adult came before God as a small child. And he said, I believe everything you say. And I know that what you told me is true. And I want to tell little children about it so that they grow up to be just like Jesus. That's an amazing person. That's an honorable life. A life well lived for God. A life that, that you and I can look at and say, you know what, I, I don't see any fault in this man. And I know God feels the same. And God said, you know what, Emmanuel, as, as, as this, this passage Charles read, Isaiah 57, says, the righteous perish and no one takes to heart. Takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands. That the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. Emmanuel lived a life holy and blameless. Before God and before you and I. Perhaps it is just that God took him away to be as pure today as he was the day that Charles met with him in his house and they talked for, for hours. And the man will went to school and he went home to be with God. When, when I talked with Mr. Uh, Ajitola, I asked, well, would, would, would you not rather have Emmanuel come home and to be remembered at home and to be honored at home. And we know there are many, many health issues with, with Emmanuel's mother. But I'll never forget what he said. He said, his mother and I sent him away to school to learn, to follow God. And we want to remember him at school. Follow God. I'll never forget that. An amazing young man. An amazing family. And I thank you for sharing him with us. May I pray for you? God, we don't understand why you take great people, great men and women of God from us such a young, young age. But God, we are better for knowing Emmanuel. I'm called to be a better pastor because of the life this man lived. His family are called to be better believers, stronger in their faith because of the life this man lived. Children in Nigeria, children at Thomas Road Baptist Church and at a tiny little church in, in Leland, North Carolina will be better people, followers of Christ because of the life this man lived before he chose. And so God, we, we release him to you. We know he is already in your presence. To be absent from the body is to be present with you. And we know it's in the blink of an eye. And there's, there's so much about that which we don't understand. But God, I believe 
Scripture what it says. But to be absent from our earthly life is to be present with you. And so God, as I look at this, this coffin which holds what resembles a friend of mine, I know that he is not. Bless this family, both here and across the ocean. Would you give them peace, grace, mercy as they continue to walk through tough times, remembering uh, what what once was and, and which which now seems almost surreal. God, would you give would you give peace, comfort, grace, mercy for Emmanuel's mother? Would you would you give healing? to her body. God, I thank you 